Hey guys, what's up? Evan from Stock Music Musician, and today I want to give you three quick advanced tips on the new drum sequencer for Reason. So, um, the first of these, and this is a great new device if you're enjoying it, or if you want to know how it works a little bit more, I made a video introducing it um, on a high level. I've also made a video sharing um, a patch that I made, basically a combinator patch that puts on my favorite features up here. Um, and so you can go to that video uh, and see how the patch works, but you can also um, just download it via a link down below. Um, so now let's dig into the advanced tips. So the first one has to do with shuffle. Um, so uh, here is the shuffle knob. You can have individual shuffle, or you can go to the global shuffle um, from the regroove mixer. Um, and if you go here and look at the regroove mixer, um, basically the global shuffle can control the shuffle amount over multiple channels. And this just sort of makes it easier to coordinate things. But if you actually want to put like a groove on it, um, so let's go back to the, this is what the global shuffle, and now we'll just turn off all shuffle. But if we wanted to apply a groove to it, you can't do that directly. Um, so you can't just go uh, assign it to A1, and then if we hit play, it doesn't map to it. Um, but the way you can do that is just by going send to track and then it automatically bypasses it. And now when we go here, it'll it'll apply the groove. So if you want to get the groove channel, uh, you have to bounce it to track. Um, but it's not too much work. Okay, the second thing is the ability to use these reset steps here to create cool glitchy effects on the fly. Um, so basically that just sets at what point um, the entire loop pattern starts to loop again. So by default, it just gets to the end of each individual pattern here, 16 bars by default, but um, it could be less. Um, I don't think you can have patterns more than 16 bars, um, but you know, we've got half time and things like that. So I guess if you were to do that, um, so, but, um, so if you play it and you set it to just one, it's just playing that first beat. And I've got, uh, I've called this the stutter effect on my combinator patch here. So it's a really, and then it picks up where it left off. So it's a really cool, easy way to add a lot of variety um, to your songs. And so now for the third tip, um, and that is that all of these channels have, well, that have CV gate outs. Um, and so that could be really helpful if you wanted the kick to like control something or the snare or whatever. So for example, if you look at something like a Europa, um, you could have the kick go to CV in one, and then have CV input one down here, control, I don't know, the, um, let's just say the filter frequency, sure. And so now, if I were to take um, sorry, so um, the, nothing is even going to the filter right now on this patch, so that's a problem. So you hear it sort of glitching there. So, um, but 
that's obviously not a very good sounding uh, version of that. But there are millions of situations where you can uh, have things, you know, whether it's a sort of side chain compression or whether you're ducking or gating a reverb or ducking something um, or triggering effects. Um, and so a big thing I would just say is this makes it really easy to set up um, gating. And also if you had a separate Kong, you know, you could take gate, I mean, you know, you could take the gate in and trigger other things. Um, now you wouldn't want to really do that on the same Kong because you can just link patches, but um, you could have situations where you could just use it to trigger samples. Um, so really simple, really powerful. I hope you have found these tips to be helpful. Uh, like I said, the Combinator patch is free if you want to check it out. And if you've enjoyed this, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks so much.